All right. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. Ah, we are inside. Greetings, greetings, fellow great tens. It's Miss Tesla Joy again. Look, we are back again and we are still looking at our probability. No? So now let's see in terms of what this question requires us to do. You know, I think this is just a, a case at N uh 2022, uh September. I think it was a September common test, this particular question. So, so that you can, you know, go and check that particular question paper. Let's start. Now, what does this uh, question require us to do? They say now, a bag contains a uh, yellow and blue marble of equal size. Now, uh, now they are saying now the probability that the marbles are chosen at random will be, uh, uh, at random will be yellow is now one over six so basically they are giving us what will then be the probability of choosing uh, a ball that is yellow uh within your what within your uh your bag of marbles right now let's see so they are saying now if it is given that there are 102 marbles in the bag how many are uh, then marbles will be blue look there are many ways in which we can solve this you know, uh, let me just provide you with this illustration, purposefully so. You know, uh, let's start here. I, I will just use the tree diagram for, for now so that I can, you know, explain this to you. Now, isn't it that if this is the probability of what? This is the probability of uh, weight. If this is the probability of yellow, this is going to be a probability of blue. Now, what is the yellow? So if they are saying the probability of getting a yellow ball is 1 over 6, and you know that yellow and blue are what we call complementary events, right? They are complementary. They are complementary events. Uh, and by saying complementary events, which means they are equal to one, right? So which means the probability of getting a two, a, a, a blue, it is going to be one subtract what? One subtract one over six, which means this is going to be five over six. So which means here it's going to be five over six. The probability of now getting your uh, blue ball, right? So which means now in your, uh, or rather your blue mar marble, right? So which means in your 2.1.1, this is going to be what? So you're going to say this, this is going to be 5 over 6. You multiply by the number of balls to get what will be then the, the blue, right? So which means the blues that you are going to get now, this is going to be the same as, this is going to be the same as your what? You are going to have 85 marbles. You're going to have 85 marbles now these are the marbles that you're going to have right and then that's going to be your 2.1.1 now let's look at your 2.1.2 now in this regard now they say if uh if there are 26 yellow marbles in the bag now right uh how many of the blue marbles then now are you going to have right now uh so now they are they they are changing now they're saying now if you are having uh, the ones that are 26 are uh, within this uh within your uh your marble what is it that now we are going to get so they are actually saying now this if this the one over six results in 26 marbles what will then be uh what will then be your uh your what what will then be your blue marbles so or in this one in this case now for this one you are going to say if your one over six gives you the 26 then the other the other one for your uh blue now it is going to be what we are going to say this is going to be same as now uh for you to find the other one you're going to say look now you are not sure in terms of how many balls so you can simply say now here you're going to say uh one if you are having one over six uh multiplies by something here multiply by the x number of balls you are getting the 26 balls right you are getting the 26 marbles uh, right. So which means now what is going to be the value that you've multiplied with now? What is the total? So basically this one we want the total. What is going to be the total in here so that you are getting the 26? Right. So which means now when you're calculating, you realize that your X that you are finding in here, uh, when you are you are going to just divide by one over six and one over six on both sides, and you realize that the X that you are actually getting in here. 
uh it's going to what it is going to be same as i think it is going to be one five six so which means the total number of balls are going to be one five six right and so which means now if you are then looking for the blue remember the one over six we are not sure in terms of what value you multiplied with in here, right? But you got the 26. So, which means now, after you got the totality now uh, of your X that you are looking for, you are going to say, look, now, uh, my, uh, now, 156, if I subtract the 26 bolts, I will then result in what? I will then result in 130 blue bolts, right? Uh, blue balls or rather your marbles isn't it so then this is going to be your answer right uh so that is basically what you're going to do in uh order to multiply or rather in order for you to get this particular answer for 2.1.2 right now let's look at your now 2.2.1 now in this one uh they say complete the following now exhaustive events remember exhaustive it's same as inclusive right it is same as inclusive events. And now what do you know about inclusive events? You know that the probability of A or B, it is going to be what? It's same as your probability of A plus your probability of B. Subtract the probability of A and B because that's this one consists of your intersection, right? So this is going to be your answer for your 2.2.1, right? If you are looking for your 2.2.2 now, what you are going to do now, they are looking for mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events, it's where now your probability of A and B is equal to zero because there is no intersection, right? So which means the easier thing that you're going to do here, it's same when you're having probability of A and B, which is equal to zero. That's going to be your exclusive events. Now, let's look at your 2.3 and see what is it that we are going to do from them. Now, uh, in 2.3, now you are given, they say given that A and B are inclusive events, right? They are saying these are inclusive events. So, which means already what you know about uh, inclusive events, you know that probability of A and B is not equal to zero because you have an intersection. That's what you know about inclusive event. So now they want you to then calculate what is that probability of A and B, right? So then uh, I think we've just written our formula in 2.2.1. So we are going to rewrite it again. Look, you are going to say, look, now the probability of A or B uh, for inclusive event is same as probability of A plus your probability of B, you know, subtract your probability of A and B, right? And now when... Uh, when you are done with that, then you're going to say this is going to be 0, 0,9 is equals to 0, 0,6 uh, plus 0, 0,4. Uh, subtract the probability of A and your B, right? And if you are making the A and B as subject of the formula, if you are saying probability of A and B, uh, it's the subject of the formula, which means you are taking it this side and you, you're moving the 0, 0,9 that side. It, this is same as 1 subtract. Uh, 0, 0,9 because 0, 0,6 plus 0, 0,4 gives you 1, right? So, which means your probability of A and your B in this case is going to be zero given by 0, 0,1, right? So, that is going to be your value for your inclusion, right? Or for your probability of A and B. How to get now? Let's try and make up some space here first, first, so that we can be in a position now to do the other question. Now, let's then start look at it. Now, what is it that you are given here? Now, uh, in your 2.4, what you are basically given there, they are saying you're having 200 and what? You're having 205 grade 10 students, uh, which uh, have a choice of how many sports? Of two sports, either your soccer or your hockey, right? Now, and what is it that they are telling us also? They are saying now, from that, you are having 86 who play uh, what to play soccer, you're having 64 who play hockey, and you're having 63 who play neither of the sports. And now they are saying those who are playing both, they are going to be X, right? So we are not sure in terms of how many are taking both of these sports, right? We are not sure because that's your value of your X. Now they want you to draw a Venn diagram representing uh, the information above. You know, now for you to draw your Venn diagram, look, we are going to come back here and say, you know, this is our Venn diagram. You see, now we are trying to make it, you know, a little bit, you know, human friendly. 
you know, because I know you guys are always accusing me of having these lies, right? Yes. You see now. Ah, you see now. Lovely stuff, right? So, which means now we are having soccer and you're having hockey, right? And the totality of the sample space here, it's 205. Now, you are given, firstly, remember, every time, whenever you are doing your Venn diagram, you always start from the intersection or the middle. So what is it that you are given? For this one, you are given that the middle stuff, or rather, or the middle here, it is your X, right? Because they are saying those who are taking both your soccer and hockey are given by your value of your X. And then now, what is it then that you are going to do uh, from them? Uh, then uh, from there, now what you are going to do is you are going to say, now what is then uh, the next thing that they want you to do? Uh, now they are saying now from there, uh, you are going to say, if those who are playing soccer are what? Those who are playing soccer are 86. Uh, they are 86. What is it that you are going to do? So you're going to say, look, your 86 here subtracts the intersection. Because remember, if let's say here it was 12, you're going to say 86 subtract 12 to get those now who are going to just take soccer only. So which means in this case, because you don't have any representation of your middle term, you write it as an X and then you come back here and subtract the X again. Similarly here, you are going to have now your 64 subtract your X. Right? That is going to be that. And now they are saying those who are taking none of these spots, they are 63, right? They are 63 learners who are going to take or rather who are not participating in any of these spots, right? And then now, let's see in terms of what they require us to do. So, and then now from there, they want you to do what they want you to now are. Uh, uh, represent this in a Venn diagram. So this is going to be you representing that in your Venn diagram. So you get your three marks. Now your 2.4.2. Now they say calculate how many now play both the soccer and hockey. So which means actually they want you to calculate what is the value of your X. Look, it is going to be very much simple. You're just going to take everything. You're going to say this, if you can take this, and you are going to add it by this one plus this one plus this one, right? And you know that expectedly, this is the answer that you're expecting, right? So which means to calculate your X, you're going to say, look, if you are having your 86 subtract X plus your X uh, uh, plus your 64 subtract your X and then plus your 63, this must give you a totality of 205, right? And then now what is it that you are going to do firstly here? Already I see a negative X and a positive X, which means all of those are going to cancel. Then after that, which means you're going to say 86 now plus your 64 plus your what plus your 63. Isn't it so? And when you are when you are doing that, the answer that you are going to get, it is going to be 213. So which means you are going to have 213. Let's fix this one. 200 and 13 right 213 and you are going to also subtract this x because i just added this one this one and also this one right so which means you are still subtracting the x here which is going to be 200 and what 205 then when you just transpose the x this side and you transpose the number this side which means basically your x is going to be 213 subtract your 205 and the answer that you are going to get here uh this is going to be I think if I'm not mistaken, this is going to give you eight. Yes. So this is going to give you your eight. So which means the learners in the middle now, they are eight of them, right? So there are eight learners who are taking none of these spots. How to get? Then now let's look at 2.4.3. Now in this one, they say to demand the probability that a learner chosen at random plays hockey only. And remember, hockey only, it is only this block. I'm just going to highlight it, right? It's only this block only. You don't include this one. You don't include the intersection because those ones are also taking sock, right? So which means now for hockey only. But now remember for hockey only, it's 64 subtract X and you already have your X, right? Because you calculated your X. So which means you are going to basically say now, uh, for you, for your hockey, it is going to be your 60 
right it's going to be 64 subtract your 8 and the answer that you're going to get this is going to be 56 so which means the probability of your hockey right your hockey it's going to be 5 6 over your 205 isn't it so then this is going to be uh now your probability of that and if you are interested in writing that this is still same as 0 comma 27 if i'm not mistaken then that is going to be a probability of hockey then you have successfully you know uh taken your two marks and then you are happy and you are safe with them now the last question they say given that a and b are two mutually exclusive events the probability of a is equal to zero comma five the probability of b is equal to zero comma four they want you to find out what is going to be a probability of not b you know i know probably most of you are thinking that this is a little bit complicated but look let me just you know take you through now as soon as they say they are mutually exclusive right uh what do you know about mutually exclusive so for mutually exclusive uh they are saying now the probability of a and b is equals to zero right the probability of a and b is equals to zero so which means now this one is going to be just simple if you are looking for that you're going to say now uh your probability of uh what uh, and now what we know about exclusive we are saying these ones are also independent yes i think that's what is important they are saying these ones now uh, i think the, if they are exclusive they are going to be dependent they are going to be dependent so which means now uh and which means when they are dependent which means the probability of your a now and your b the probability of your a and b remember the probability of a and b uh, it's probability of A plus your probability of B plus your probability of B. This is the formula for what? This is the probability. Uh, this is the formula for independent. And according to now, uh, dependent, this is not equal. So the easier thing that you're going to do here, this you're going to just say now, for you to get the probability that is not B, you're going to say now probability of A, probability of A, now subtract your probability of B. And the answer that you're going to get here, this is going to be same as 0, 0,5 subtract 0, 0,4. And your answer that you're going to get in here, it's going to be 0, 0,1. Then this is going to be a probability of what? Uh, this is going to be a probability of everything that is not B. How to get? Then that's how you are going to solve this question. And you have successfully solved the entire question. Thank you very much.